Hey guys, Colbert here. Welcome to another Racial Legends video. Guys, this will be a showcase slash gameplay of Duchess Lily 2. We've got a 10x going on for her. So I thought this was the best time to actually make a video on this champion. So uh, we'll go over my own Duchess Lily 2, how I built her and how you can build her as well. Um, it doesn't have to be the same build because she can be used in so many different areas with different builds. But I think the one that I have her is just fantastic in the sense that she is such a big carry. So here she is, here's my Duchess Lily 2. Uh, let's go over her skills first, and then we'll come back to the gearing and why I've built her this way. So, first things first guys, she's a support uh, Demon Spawn Champion, so she's gonna be your carry for the Demon Spawn Factions. Don't you worry about the Demon Spawn Faction, honestly, if you do have Duchess. She's a, a great reviver, so if you're having issues, she'll carry you through all the way to 21 and 21 as well. So A1 Abyssal Invocation, tax an enemy two times, place a shield buff equal to 10% of this champion's max HP for two turns on this champion and the ally with the lowest HP. This is great when you do have that squishy ally in your team. Use Duchess Lily 2 with as high HP as possible so you can give a nice shield to your lowest ally. This works just great. I think uh, if you have a Duchess Lily 2 with 100,000 health, that's 10,000 health shield that you can apply to your ally with the lowest HP. This does not do anything based on your defense, so don't go heavy on defense for Duchess Lily 2 thinking that will help the shield. Be very careful on the wording of the uh, of the attacks. So A2, Shroud of Souls, place a 50% increase attack buff and a block debuff buff on all allies for two turns. Place a perfect veil buff on all allies except this champion for two turns. So this is just great for helping that squishy attack based champion get some uh, buffing going on block debuff buff always helps against uh, debuffers and the perfect veil protects everyone from aoe's in terms of damage they receive um, much less damage when they do have a perfect veil on them but that is provided by a duchess lily too this is just a great way to support them only four turns cooldown you can actually use this in the clan boss as well if you need a champion that applies a block debuff buff uh, on everybody in order to just avoid getting those debuffs from the clan boss but I will not be showcasing uh, Duchess Lily 2 on the clan boss uh, for this video. So Spectral Rebirth revives all dead allies with 70% HP. This is just a great revive. Look at that. 70% HP. Place a Veil buff on all allies except this champion for one turn. Place a 15% continuous heal buff on all allies for two turns. Only four turns cooldown for this revive. This goes so well. Especially for Faction Wars, you'll see that this is so useful. When somebody dies, you have that revive uh, in a four turns. She also protects them with the Veil uh, when they do revive. Veil is a weaker version of Perfect Veil, so it does half the uh, damage reduction provided when they do have Veil. Then Ethereal Ways, this passive, decreases the damage taken by all allies from AoE attacks by 25%. Another amazing way to protect your team. Duchess Lily too, uh, just a big protector of your team, both with the, per uh, with the Perfect Veil from her A2, but also through this passive, 25% less damage, 15% from bosses. This is huge in terms of surviving a little bit longer for the clan boss. Means you get some more damage on the clan boss as well. This goes so well in arena because it protects your whole team from those big AoEs, especially against those nasty uh, trandas in arena. And then finally, her aura is just a speed aura, 19%. This is on the lower spot, lower side, but it is an all. Uh, all battles aura so this is why it's on the lower side compared to other champions um, I do use her mostly in arena but I don't use her in the leader slot usually I use some other champion uh, which will benefit the whole uh, team in that sense so let's go to her artifacts just going over her skills so she has like a big protection to the whole team in terms of AoE attacks so I would say that stalwart set is an amazing set on her it just adds up to the damage uh, reduced from AoE attacks Minus 30% damage taken from enemy AoE attacks. Because she does not apply a Perfect Veil on herself, she does not benefit from that 15% damage reduction that Perfect Veil gives to the team. So she would uh, be great in actually surviving a little bit longer with the own uh, Stalwart set. So if you don't have a Stalwart set, anything other can go, um, anything other that gives you a, a lot of health can go here, like an Immortal set. Uh, a, just a health set will be great here. Um, there's other set that could be useful, like the regeneration set, but you will need to have some very big um, HP percent substats to it. So you can see here from the sus substat of my gear that I focus on speed, some resistance, although resistance is always great. It's very hard to get high resistance 
and high HP as well. Uh, here I'm going for HP percent substats, some defense percent if I could speed, uh, speed mostly here. And then I have HP percent primaries on the gloves, HP percent primary on the chest, and then speed primary on the boots because I want her as fast as possible and rings accessories and banner all HP primary uh, I didn't go with anything else on, on the other gear than um, let's say I could have gone resistance but for Duchess to be good with resistance especially for PvP situations you need at least 600 resistance which is not easy to get without resistance gear so HP on everything giving her some overall stats of 94,436 health this can go way higher, by the way, because you saw that I did have some uh, defense percent substats in there, but still 94,000, it's a lot of health to have with a stalwart set. Remember, 30% reduced damage taken from AOE attacks. 249, it's the speed that Duchess has, so it's not extremely high, but it's pretty good when you're using her in a, a situation where she'll be going second, so here you have your Arbiter, then it's going to be Duchess protecting the defensive champion, then you will have your new carry in there, and uh, she'll be going basically second in order to provide that block debuff buff on everybody, and also the perfect veil. So uh, resistance is at 253, not really important in my opinion. And then Masteries on this build. <laughs> and then Masteries, I did go for the support tree. There's so many different builds. If, you be, if you're gonna be going for a, a clan boss situation or faction where you wanna get some more damage, go War Master. But I would advise going this support tree instead because she's such a great reviver with a four turn cooldown. She provides so much protection to the team, getting timely intervention and lasting gifts together with Spirit Haste. It's just an amazing combo of protecting your team and also getting extra turn there so you can get them back up again uh, if they do uh, die during the fight. Getting also Cycle of Revenge is also nice. I would I could also argue about Retribution here, countering. Um, when Duchess Lady to counter, she'll be using her A1. Her A1 gives the shield both to herself and to the lowest HP ally. You can definitely go with this. You can also go with Shadow Heal as well. If you think you're going to be finding a lot of enemy teams that will be healing this will give a big boost to um to Duchess Lady to whenever she gets uh the enemy to, to get a heal she'll be healing by six percent of her max HP but I did go this route instead and a cycle of revenge because this gives a nice amount of termiter to her when um when an ally is attacked and uh, what you want is when your allies are attacked they fall you want to get them back up again with the revive so Let's go over it and I'll show you Dutch Lily 2 in the arena where I think uh, she is one of the best champions, of course, in terms of protecting your whole team. Uh, let's just go against this team. Um, I won't use my Trunda here. I will be using one champion that goes so well with Duchess Lily 2 and it's Cadrophone. So here is the basic team here. We're going to have our booster. We're going to have our Duchess Lily 2. Cadrophone goes so well with, um, with Duchess because she will be providing that perfect veil for Cadrafon to actually get some more damage going and anything else here would be best anything that provides a defense down so you can do some more damage with the Cadrafon anything that provides a um, a shield removal or buff removal would be great so I could use my just my um, one of my Madam Series here I'll use my Madam Series with the block uh, debuff set on the immunity set so here it is you will be boosting the team then we'll apply the defense down. And then here's the protection for the whole team in case the enemy team manages to go. So there's the enemy team. We didn't get provoked from uh, this enemy Molly. Provoke would have basically locked us out from doing any damage with Kadrafon. But Kadrafon goes next. And boom, just wipes out the enemy team. And then he gets an extra turn, goes in there. Uh, so we hit, so we couldn't get the kill there. Maybe we get it here. There it is. So this will be the basic team in terms of uh, in terms of attacking there. So here we've got like a, a very annoying, I would say, uh, champion, and that's Tormin. We get frozen. So here, I want to see how much damage they're gonna do to us. No, we're frozen here. <laughs> okay, is this? Oh, the bugs. <laughs> okay, uh, let's just speed boost again. We need, we need Duchess to take a turn so she can actually protect them. But look at how much health she has. She got attacked by the A2 from 
um, from Rotos and barely moved her health. Trying to protect our own team here. There's the basic. So look at that shield there. So three bars in terms of health. And then she protected Arbiter there with a little bit of shield that she provides through the A1. And I think my Caterpillar is just bugged there. So I'm going to try and see if I can uh, stop that Rotos from taking a turn. So there we go. Now we protect the whole team. Hopefully, uh, no, we didn't protect Kadra from there because he did have a block, uh, a block buffs deep up on him. So he might get frozen here if I boost. So I won't boost. What I'll do there is just let me use a two here. Boom. There we go. Extra turn. There we go. Look at that. He goes back to his place. That's great. And then uh, we'll just close it off. So see, after getting all those attacks, you still add. Almost 60% HP. Look at those big shields protecting everybody with those counters. And boom, boom. She gave it to, uh, who did she give it to? I think it was Madame Ceres. Such a huge shield. So what I usually do is I use my Duchess on defense when I'm doing Arena. A pretty good defensive team would revolve around having Duchess in there. So you'd be having Duchess, but not in the leader slot. You would have something else with maybe a defensive um, a defensive aura or an attack aura, depending on what you want to do. If you know that your team will be going second, you don't have such a, a fast team, you will have something like Kadrafon's lead in there instead. He would give Kadrafon um, a big boost to his own attack and then have some other champions in there to basically help the other two in terms of survivability. What I would do is maybe use a Krisk in there for added shields, some big shields, and then maybe use a Torment here just to lock everybody up. This is a pretty solid defense, but you can also run, let's say, Torment here uh, in the lead instead for, for his defense if aura to benefit everybody to survive a little bit more. But it really depends. If your gear is missing on Caterpillar in terms of damage, you would put Caterpillar there in the lead. So uh, that's what I pretty much use in Arena for some of my uh, plat pushes. I don't always use this defense, but in some of them, I do use them uh, basically with Torment there in the lead. And this team survives a ton of a ton of punishment, both both because of the end game champions, but also because Duchess is there to protect everybody. Uh, right after, let's say they lose their um, their buffs, she can actually revive them and and just bring them back. It's just an amazing champion. I would say, congrats on getting the Duchess. You have to decide on where you want to use her. It's a very very good champion, but. It's built totally different for certain aspects of the game. Let's say clan boss build, totally different than um, than uh, the arena build. And in terms of dungeons, as I said, you can go any other set if you don't have stalwart. Immortal set is the easiest one to get because it's a clan boss reward. You get them every day that you do your clan boss, you get them through the chest. So it's an easy way to get her health high enough with those immortal sets. So this was the video, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. And guys, I'll see you in the next one. See ya.